our little balloon lip, okay. So essentially pro moon landers and people were uh, people at NASA as well, they all tend to think that the action of the air rushing out at high at high high speed, okay, in this direction will give you an equal and opposite reaction in this direction which acts upon the inner wall of the balloon and thus propels it forward. Obviously, you know, when we let go of a balloon, it just pops out and flies everywhere. But th that, that's their explanation as to how it works. Okay, now, if we take a look at a rocket engine, okay, a rocket, what we'd see is that here's my little rocket, okie dokie, dum dum dum, there's my, uh, there's my nozzle, pretty good, eh? Now, we've got the uh, fuel and oxidizer tanks, we've got pipes which lead down to pumps and turbines and things, which basically <clears throat> pump the fuel and the oxidizer into the combustion chamber where, where the, uh, uh, they use hypergolic uh, fuels, so they ignite upon uh, contact with oxygen and uh, they cause a rapid expansion of gases and then they expand out at very very high speed to create thrust or a thrust force which then gets chopped out on the back of the nozzle okay now uh, pro moon landers and lots of people at NASA tend to think or tend to promote the idea that merely the action of the exhaust coming out from from the combustion here to here will create an opposite and equal reaction that forces or that causes the rocket to move to be propelled forward okay so basically all of these all of these the fuel and the the liquid the molecules moving in one direction here cause an equal and opposite reaction actually on the on the base of the rocket which pushes it forward now that's their idea on how a rocket works. Uh, one, th one very important thing to mention, and that is, as soon as um, as soon as all these gases, um, all these gases here, leave the nozzle, they n are no longer effective in the forward propulsion of the rocket. That's what pro moon landers uh, and people at NASA say. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind okay now here's my explanation as to how a rocket works okay so here we go again there we go we've got our little big 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 wide nozzle there there we go we've got our fuel tanks not star tanks we've got the pipe work goes down to turbines now so the fuel and the oxidizer get pumped in into the thrust chamber or into the combustion chamber very high speed you get uh, a burn or combustion of the gases they expand and they are forced out through the nozzle at extremely high speeds obviously when we when we watch a rocket lift off and launch uh, we we see this you know it's clearly observable now what I think happens is that the action of this thrust force here causes a reaction by the mass that is behind the rocket so if I just turn this around for everyone to see so the rocket the thrust force coming out the nozzle hits the mass and the mass gives an opposite and equal reaction that acts on the contact area here that pushes the rocket in this direction. One very important thing that a lot of people tend to overlook and that is a rocket is one mass system so all of this all of that there is can should be regarded as one mass system You've got fuel, you've got thrust, and you've got the actual mass of the rocket itself. All that is one mass system. And that solely acts on the mass, whether it be the Earth, whether it be atmosphere, that gives you an equal and opposite reaction. So that's my understanding of how a rocket works. Okay, now we're gonna put this to the test. So what we're gonna do now 
is we're going to use our little balloon car as our little experiment to see who's right and who is wrong. There we go and see how well it performs, see what it does. There we go. So we've blown up our balloon and there we go. There we go. And as you can see, there we go. It's going pretty well. What I'm saying basically is that the air just coming out of the uh, straw acts on the atmosphere that's in the room, which causes a reaction, which then pushes the whole lot forward. Because you've got to remember, and that is that the air coming out of the straw actually moves with the vehicle. It doesn't get left behind or anything. It actually moves with it. That's why we have to remember that it's a mass system. Okay, so how we're going to check to see whether who's right or who's wrong is what we're going to do. We're going to divert the air that comes out of the straw, end of the straw. And we can do this simply by using a piece of paper. We're going to attach. There we go. Now I'm going to put the paper. I hope everyone can see this. There's at least a two inch gap there. I'm not sure whether everyone can see that. There we go. There's a there's a gap where the straw from the distance from the end of the straw to the uh, to the paper. Basically, you're not restricting the air movement that's coming out of the uh, the the bottle and the straw. So, because the air can dissipate everywhere out the sides and everything, okay? Now, if pro moon landers are correct in that the air moving this direction will cause an equal and opposite direction a force in that direction, then it should move. Whereas if I'm correct and that it, that it needs the mass of the atmosphere to act against, this shouldn't move, basically. Okay, because we've actually diverted the the thrust force of the balloon car. Okay, so we're going to now put it to the test. So here we go. Let's just line it up. Here we go, and we're off. And we're off. And we're off. Uh, it's not moving. Um, what we're going to do? Um, who? Um, it's not working at all, and it's not moving. Um, the balloon's going down. The air's coming out of the straw. It's hitting the straw, I can feel the air from the side, and it hasn't moved one little bit. There we go. If we go back to uh, how a rocket works in space, we have to remember that in space there is a vacuum where, where basically matter is very, very, very um, sparse, sparsely populated in a, you know, in a given area. Okay, so, okay, so you've got the fuel tanks and my pen's running out. There we go. So what's going to happen is that we're going to have the fuel, or what could happen, I should say, is uh, let me just change my pen. There we go. We've got a nice purpley one here. There we go. There we go. That's, that's better. What's going to happen in, in, a, in a vacuum when the rocket's in space? And that is the fuel is going to be pumped out. Okay. You're going to have combustion, you're going to have the thrust force coming out, okay, out of there. But there is no mass there for it to, for it to act upon. Therefore, you won't, get the, uh, you won't get the reaction in this direction. You will not get that because there is no um, mass for this thrust force to act upon. Now that's, we've, we've clearly demonstrated that with the balloon car uh, in the video, but also one of the major factors of why a rocket um, will not work in space is that we also have the idea of free expansion. So basically with free expansion, what we, what we can see with free expansion, and that is when we have our when we have our rocket here, there we go, and we have our pipe work going into the combustion chamber. As soon as the valves are open to allow the fuel and the oxidizer into the combustion chamber, they'll just be sucked straight out by the vacuum of space, 
like this. And the rocket will just remain stationary. It won't go anywhere. Now, I'm not sure about you, but after watching this video, I mean, how, you know, there's a lot of bullshit in life at the end of the day. And I'm to me, rockets working in space is just part of it.